It's all down to practice, and a bit of natural talent doesn't go amiss either. But 360 degree robotic manipulator arms can be difficult things to master. And when it comes down to getting radioactive waste, fuel and sludge out of one of Western Europe's most hazardous facilities, you have to get it right. It's the people who are being trained to get it right who make this story. There was a time when Sellafield would have dived straight into a bespoke specialist solution probably buying in the skills from an external contractor. But Leanne being trained here at Rovtech's Barrow Docks facility is Sellafield through and through. Yeah. Um, I'm a process operator. Uh, I've worked on days on the waste team, then moved on to control room operator. On shifts did that for seven, eight years, and now on to the retrievals ops. Um, when I was on the waste team, I used to drive uh, the diggers and the machines, so it's kind of like something I've done before, but in a totally different way. Um, but when I got the opportunity to come and do this, I you know, jumped at the chance to do it, um, and I'm really enjoying it. The manipulator arm is a key tool in the vital process of getting the material out of the first generation Magnox storage pond, so it can be stored in a safer place. Different tool heads on the arm offer different ways of moving, sorting and segregating the fuel and waste. In D-Bay, the arm is used to get sludge and other material out of the congested area. The very nature of the radioactive Magnox material in the facility means a steady hand and cool head are essential, but Leanne has been more than up for the challenge. So every day people get this opportunity to do this with this sort of manipulator arm that's never really been done before. It's so frustrating, so you've got to have the patience. And we, we did like kind of a little assessment before we were chose to come down to see how we were. So that would suggest that, you know, I've got the, the natural ability to do it. Billy has overseen Leanne's development on the six week course. Trainees start by using the manipulator arm when it's right in front of them, practicing picking up wooden blocks and then testing their dexterity and spatial awareness. They're then gradually weaned further and further away so that they end up controlling an arm which is underwater and only visible through a computer screen. This is a completely different challenge and not everybody's up to it. I think the, the, the idea of training um, can be an awful lot of classroom training, death by PowerPoint, that sort of thing that, and that needs to be done with different courses. Um, but with this one, the practicality of the hands-on experience they seem to thrive on. Well, we understand our own people. Uh, we understand what we want to, from the candidates at the end of it. We can intertwine the human performance tools and the decommissioning mindset. We can put all aspects of, uh, of, of safety in there and use our own language as well. Without being too contrived, we can actually make it a genuine uh, human performance tool. Of course, safety underpins every single element of the training. At the beginning, we stop, we think, we act, review all the time, and that becomes embedded within the, within the training and the assessment. And eventually, we see the, the candidates who are already doing that on the job start to introduce that themselves more and more frequently. Initially, more than a dozen people involved in operating, maintaining, and commissioning the manipulator arm are going through the training programme. The aim is to ensure that the first generation Magnox storage pond has plenty of resilience in having the right operational people to deliver its bulk exports programme. The operators that have already been through the training course down here have expressed how good and how much they've enjoyed it. They're very keen to continue on this, even though it's been a six week course, and some of them have been travelling down from work on a daily basis. We have, they haven't had no complaints whatsoever about the course, and they're very keen and, and eager for the next week to start and, and continue it on trying to look in-house now and, and develop the operator's skills. They've sat there in a, a dormant state for such a long time under control and surveillance and now we want to build their skill base up and keep it in-house. It gives us a, a, a solid base going forward. We're not reliant on a contractor that can leave on a whim or you know, move on to a different task. We have our own skills in-house that we can probably develop further on into the future, but it's allowing us to get on to the retrievals task more efficiently and effectively. As the end of reprocessing nears and the decommissioning mission ramps up, 
Sellafield is changing in a more dramatic way than ever before. That means its people are changing too. People like Leanne. I was worried because it's the unknown. I didn't know what I was expecting. I, I, I didn't know anything really. Um, all I knew I was coming down to work a manipulator arm and that was all and I've come down and it's not what I expected but it's you know it's been good and it's been yeah it's been interesting. I think it's important for Sellafil workers to be trained to run their own site because it's our job to do.